Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Masters of Mute Knight. Masters of Mute Knight is brought to you by Knapsack Games. It's for two to four players, ages 13 and up, and games range anywhere from 45 to 75 minutes. Many years ago, the first meteors of Mute Knight began to fall to Earth. Humans that absorbed this substance transformed into powerful mutants. And seeking ever more power, the mutants waged an ongoing war for control of the Mute Knight. Now an unprecedented large meteor shower is approaching Dash City. The mutants converge for the ultimate battle. You will play as one of these eight mutants, gain powers and mutate to discover special traits to power up and knock out the others. The last player or mutant standing is the winner. So depending on the player count in the game will determine the layout of the city. Each of the different zones of the city are a tile that you'll lay out in the appropriate configuration. Here we are set up for a four player game, which is the game that I enjoy the most. It is two versus two, where you can team up and do tactics and strategize as you face off against your enemies or your fellow mutants, so to say. But you'll lay out these city tiles and at the bottom of the tiles, it will show you what different items go in these zones. Now these items or objects in the zones will be things that you can toss and throw at the other players in the game. You've got all kinds of different things here. They have different effects too, some of them, but they'll do damage as you toss them at the other players. You've got like power poles, you've got cars, you've got ice cream trucks, yes, ice cream, because it can cause frost when you hit somebody with it. And you've got trees and water towers and you have toxic waste, which causes poison. Next, you want to take the power cards, shuffle them up, and deal one face up in each of the zones where you see the plus one mutant knight. And so there are eight different mutants to choose from. You will take the appropriate card and standee along with your starting deck of cards, and you'll have a trait. Now, the main card for your mutant has some stats on it. You have your health, which will start at 50. You have your mutant knight, which will start at zero. But this card also gives you some status effects as well as what your turn sequence looks like. But the traits, this is the important thing for starting is that you have three to choose from. And based on which trait you begin with might synergize a different type of powers and things that you're looking for as you move through the game and build your deck. Now everybody has a standard deck of cards. And the main things that you're gonna have here are a cleanse card, a punch card, a pickup card, and a fling card. Those are your basic cards that you're gonna be adding to your deck. And throughout the game, you're going to be expanding it and building and getting even more powers. But these powers are very unique. This whole power deck of cards that you can acquire, so many different directions and powers to choose from, keeps the game really, really fresh. So at the start of the game, each player will take their standee and in turn, place it in a zone. In this two versus two game, you will want to strategize and plan out where you're going to start. Now, each player will draw four cards from their power deck. Again, this is a deck builder, so these different cards are gonna really dictate what you're doing on your turn. Now in your turn, as you're playing the different cards from your hands, there's some icons to be mindful of. You have a fist for melee damage, hand to hand, right there in the same zone, you're fighting one of the mutants. Or you have a ranged attack where you can throw items and things and powers from one zone to the other. This is a targeting icon. And then you have a mutant that's flexing, which represents a personal power. It might be a power that allows you to remove status effects, or you might have a power like teleport, which will affect you directly. So there's different icons that you need to be mindful of as you're playing these cards and the powers and possibly how they relate back to your traits in the game. Now also, you're going to be looking at icons with a little flare or starburst behind the icon. These are counters. So if someone throws an ice cream truck at you and you happen to have the blizzard card in your hand, which is a reactionary card, it will allow you to cancel that attack. So there are three main phases. First thing you're doing, like I said, is playing your power cards, being mindful of icons and the different cards and keeping them in a sequence that makes most sense for your strategy. And then secondly, 
you will be collecting Mutantite, if there's any available. Thirdly is a bit of a cleanup, the end phase, where you'll be repopulating cards and drawing back up to your hand limit. So as an example, let's take a look at what Bionica is going to do in her turn. She drew her four cards, and the first card she's going to play is Fling. Fling is important for her because she has a trait that's marksmanship. So it does an extra point of damage every time she throws something at an opponent. So she's grabbing the radioactive waste and throwing it at Adria. Adria is going to not only take damage because of her marksmanship ability, but this particular type of object is going to cause poison. And this poison card will do damage to Adria, but Adria will have to add this card to her discard pile. So every time the card comes back up into her hand, she's going to get poison damage. Now, this is an instance of where you'll see the, the card that you'll be using to get rid of things is called Cleanse. Cleanse will allow you to remove things like poison and frost and some environmental effects like fire and water. This is a self or personal card that you'll use to help protect yourself throughout the game. Now, secondly, what Bionica is going to do after throwing the Toxic Waste is going to pick up the card in her zone, which happens to be a heal card. Fantastic card, actually. This card will then go into her discard pile. And thirdly, she's going to use her Cleanse card, not as a Cleanse, but she's going to use it as a dash, So, which means she can move from zone to zone. It can be uh, orthogonal or diagonal, it doesn't matter, but she's going to move over next to Adria where she will use her final card as a punch to do two more points of damage. And that's the basics of what you're doing with those cards. Now, she'll collect all that damage and mark it on her card. If Adria happened to have any reactionary cards, she could have prevented some of this damage. But this early in the game, you're not gonna really have a lot of that. Now, all the cards that Bionica played on her turn are going into her discard pile. Next thing she's doing is looking to see if she collects can collect any mutantite and yes there's one point available she'll mark it on her sheet and then finally we get to the end or cleanup phase and she's going to first draw a card and repopulate the zone that had the mutantite and then she's going to draw back up to four cards and that's kind of the example of what you're doing on your turn this is again a push and pull back and forth collecting cards doing damage and so forth so, why am I collecting Mutantite, and why is it important? Well, throughout the game, and as you get more and bigger and better powers, some of those powers allow you to do additional damage if you spend Mutantite. Or, as you progress through the game and get to a level of 3 or higher, you can spend that Mutantite to get more traits or more powers and abilities for your Mutant. And you'll draw three trait cards, look at them all, you know, take your time, and pick one and add it to your mutant, or hero, if you want to call it that. The thing here is that you're trying to obviously create some synergy between the traits that you already have and the new ones that you're gathering. Now, we already talked about poison a bit, but there's other environmental and things that can happen. There are frost cards that can be placed on you, specifically like if someone throws an ice cream truck at you, you can get frost. And the more frost cards that are on you, the more damage is going to happen. So there's also water and fire that can happen in zones. And you even can combine things where with like water, you can use electricity to make damage more exponentially bad for someone. But that's where those cleanse cards come into play. Removing that from zones or from you personally can really help and save you in later rounds. And so the game is a bit of a king of the hill and you ultimately are trying to reduce your opponents to zero health. And throughout the game, again, you're collecting amazing different powers. There's so many different unique ones here that really do some massive damage. And as, again, as you create those environmental effects, you can really ramp up the damage fast. And my favorite mode here was playing two versus two, but really, like I said, it's king of the hill. You take your opponents to level zero in health. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, one of the things I really liked is the fact that they went with standees over miniatures because it adds that comic book cartoon feel, and I really like that. It's a beautiful game, just in general, and all the different powers, there's so many vastly different powers that add so much to the game, and the replayability, it's just fantastic. 
Uh, it's a game that's right in my alley. I really enjoyed it. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.